Okay, so a couple of days ago, Northern Lion was uh, wondering in his uh, in his Isaac run if he he'd ever played the same seed twice in a row. So what I was wondering is, well, did he? Um, the math here is is uh, relatively easy. Uh, I am a mathematician, um, and the problem here is is also known as the birthday paradox, which uh, is if if you have a couple of people in a room and you ask the question like what's the chance that two people have the same birthday the the chance is actually a lot higher than than a lot of people think because there are only 365 days in a year generally and if you have 30 or so people in a room it's actually over half that you have two of them with the same birthday which is sort of counterintuitive and uh People don't really uh, grasp this uh, unless they work out the math and why it is. And uh, a couple of people did in the comments, which was interesting. And and in fact, the intuition that Northern Lion had, which was the odds of this having happened, is they're they're not big, but they're also not incredibly small. Um, but I was also wondering has it happened uh, and because i'm too lazy to actually go through all the videos and try to to look at the seats um what i did is i uh, used some scripting and a little bit of machine learning uh, to actually try and figure out if he has and um, the answer is probably not i didn't go through all the videos i didn't get it to a hundred percent accuracy um, I did find, for example, these two videos, which uh, have the same four beginning letters of the seed, which is, is kind of interesting. There's also two with five matching letters in total, but they're spread throughout the seed. Uh, and I just want to uh, tell you guys how uh, how I did this and uh, yeah, what's involved uh, in the mathematics and, and computer science behind doing something like this. Okay, so when I wanted to try to figure this out, uh, actually step zero is uh, seeing if you can find this information somewhere. And I knew this website existed, northernliondb.com. Um, it has an incredible amount of information about Northern Lion's Isaac runs. Um, but unfortunately the seeds are not a part of that. Uh, I also looked in the comments, like sometimes uh, they would be there if if he forgot to do it in the video but in general there's no seat in the comments so in order to uh, actually find out the seats uh, we would need to to download the videos so what you see here is a small script uh, it's written in bash which is a, a language that uh, you can use to just run a couple commands on Linux. Um, and what we're doing here is we're using this tool called uh, YouTube DL, which uh, allows you to download YouTube videos uh, from the command line. Um, and But we're actually not using that to download the videos themselves, because if we want to get the seeds, um, generally they'll be in like the first 20 seconds of the video and uh, Northern Lion will pop up the seed and it will show. Uh, so we don't actually need the whole like 30 to 40 minutes of video uh, to figure that out. Um, but if you use YouTube DL to actually download the video, uh, what happens is that it, it will pull in the whole thing. Uh, but luckily it has this minus G option, uh, which gets us just the URLs for the streams. So there's separate audio and video streams. And what I did is uh, we capture those URLs. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the video URLs. So we'll skip the old uh, numbered URLs, which are the audio URLs. And uh, we use this tool called FFmpeg to uh, get uh, to fetch this URL, uh, get the first 20 seconds, just copy everything it has, and save that to a file. 
what I did, I used uh, the Afterbirth Plus uh, playlist. Uh, so we're only looking at those videos. Um, but this uh, this script gets us to first 20 seconds of every video, which um, I mean, it's not little, but it didn't take that long to actually get all the videos. Um, so now we have a couple thousand uh, 20 second segments and we want to somehow figure out how uh, how to uh, get the, the, the seeds out of this. So the first step in uh, in getting these uh, these seeds is figuring out which uh, where are the the past frames, right? So where is the the game past? The seed is shown, and we can uh, later use some some machine learning to extract that. Um, so again, we use FFmpeg. Uh, we use the files that we downloaded, and there's this uh, thumbnail functionality, which basically says, "Okay, just pick a random frame from this interval," and we're gonna pick 15 thumbnails, and we're gonna do that uh, 120 frames apart. Um, so that's one frame about every two seconds, uh, and we're gonna see. Uh, like we're just gonna capture those and I did that for like five videos. So we had five videos where we just captured a couple of frames um, Just to see what's what and if we actually can can get those frames and and see What we have uh, there Okay, so once we got those frames what I did is I sorted those into two sets um, here we have the, the frames that are right. So these are uh, correct pass frames where the seed is visible, uh, the animation has stopped, and it's uh, we could clearly get the seed from one of these frames. Uh, and then we have the no frames, which are frames where, for example, we're still in the character selection screen, it's this black screen, we're in the game itself, we're here in the, the save file selection, uh, and I later I added a couple, for example, where we had a pause screen without uh, a seat. Uh, so uh, these are, are, I guess, challenge runs, um, or uh, the animation is still in progress. So the the seat actually pops in later, and it just slides into the screen like this. And because later we want to actually select that square it's useful that the animation has actually fully stopped and the, the, the seed is in the right place. Uh, so I added these examples uh, to help the, the machine learning algorithm figure out like, hey, those uh, we don't need. Okay, so once we had those frames selected, uh, what I did is I wrote a small Python script um, uh, using TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a a relatively new machine learning toolkit which has a lot of different options and uh, functionalities built in um, and if you want to do machine learning what you need you need uh, a set to teach the computer like what you want um, and you generally want two sets so you want a training set um, which is used to to learn from and then you want a validation set to check whether what you learned is actually what you want to be doing. Uh, and so what we have is uh, we have these two. Uh, you can make an, a data set from a directory, which is the training frames directory, which has the yes frames and the no frames. So I did that manually. Um, and we configure some stuff like the, the image height and width. Um, and then we get to what's called a model. So uh, this is a neural network. Um, a neural network in this case is sort of like how your brain works and there's uh, various nodes and they, they give like an impulse if they're triggered and uh, it consists of layers. And these layers have, for example, 16, 32, uh, 64, 128 nodes. Um, but at the end, what we want is we want an output in a number of classes. So we want this neural network to tell us, like, is this the pass screen uh, or is it something else? So 
in order to uh, end, there's one important layer here in the beginning, uh, which rescales this. So uh, neural networks work well with numbers between zero and one. So if you know about colors, they're often represented with uh, the RGB value, which is one to 255. So if we divide by that, then what we get is something between zero and one. So we have this model, we optimize it. Uh, we have a way to save it while it's running and, and to reuse it afterwards. And then we just need to simply train this model. And it's uh, it's very simple with with uh, TensorFlow to, to just train it. Um, yeah, so this is how we get a piece of software that can recognize whether a screen is currently paused uh, or whether it's something else and whether so we want to extract the seed from this uh, and we can now find these these frames so after we uh, trained our model uh, what we uh, need to do is uh, evaluate it so we have the same model over here and we just load the weights that we we trained and then we've sort of recreated it and that what we're going to do is for each uh, 20 second start that we downloaded we're going to run the the ffmpeg command that gets us a, th a couple of these thumbnail style frames so just selects a couple of them uh, sort of at random and then what we get is uh, we can go through these frames and for each frame what we're gonna do is we use, use our model to make a prediction and if the answer is yes we're gonna move this uh, to another to another file another directory uh, and if it's not we're just gonna save the, the, the path where we stored all these frames uh, but it, in the end, what it turned out is that just the, the yes uh, frames were good enough and we could we could use those. So let's take a look at those. Um, so once we had we had the training frames and then we went to the selected frames. So these are all the frames from the different videos uh, where uh, you have like the seat nicely in the frame. Um, and we can then extract this seed uh, from all these frames. Okay, so once we selected our frames with the seeds in there, um, I just by hand figured out like approximately where is this seed on the screen uh, and we can crop it out. Um, and then what uh, what I did is something that's uh, that's actually I didn't do this at first. So we I at first I just cropped this and I tried to use tools to get the letters out of this this picture. Uh, but what it turns out is that the tools that are available for this um, they generally work best with uh, black on white text uh, because they they are largely made for scanning books and and automatically like uh, reading documents. So what we want to do then is uh, set it to uh, a grayscale. So make sure that it's just black and white and uh, really increase the contrast. Uh, it just helps to make the edges a little bit sharper. Um, and it's, it makes it, the, the font that's used in Isaac uh, look a little bit more like, like a typeface that you would find in, uh, in a book, for example. So once we've done that transformation, this is what it looks like. So we have all the seeds. Um, a human can clearly read this. Like this is this is perfectly fine to read. But you see, like there are a little bit, like uh, for example, this P here ends a little bit early, and it's like it's a particular font, right? So the only step, or there, there's two steps left now, uh, which is uh, to actually read these like convert them to text and then figure out if there any of them are the same as each other. So for uh, recognizing what text is there, uh, I found two tools out there. Um, both are, are machine learning based like optical character recognition tools. Um, 
which is the sort of official term for the, them. Uh, one of them is Tesseract, uh, that's currently maintained by Google, and there's also GoCR, which uh, worked fine, but in the end I, I relied mostly on the Tesseract output. Um, Tesseract is very good for actually full, like full written texts, um, so you actually have to specify a language as well, which in this case doesn't make much sense because there's no actual language, it's just... Uh, yeah, uh, random letters and numbers together. Uh, and I found a post on Stack Overflow that said, oh, GoCR is really good at this. But in the end, I found that the Tesseract uh, answers were a little bit uh, better. Uh, you do have to specify uh, the DPI of the image. And there's some magical options here that say, hey, uh, I don't want you to, to try to use a dictionary. Just try to recognize the, the letters and the, the numbers um, and output those. Uh, so when you get that, for example, one of the, the files will just look like this. Like it, it will say, hey, we have these. Uh, this is what we found. And... Uh, my experience was that it's actually not that good in the sense that often you'll find that one or two of these are wrong. Uh, so it's not 100% accurate. Um, but in the end, I sort of figured that that doesn't really matter that much. Um, and why it doesn't matter is because if uh, this this recognition makes the same mistake twice, then we'll still figure out that that seed is indeed the same as the other one. Uh, so it's only uh, it only ha is unfortunate if it would make the se a different mistakes, which could happen. Um, but I don't know if it did. Uh, but in the end, uh, like this this figured uh, uh, allowed us a way to uh, to find some fairly similar uh, seeds. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, there's one step left. So this is what actually ended up being this final step. Uh, we used the Tesseract results um, and we sort of uh, read all the seeds that we found. And then what we're going to do is we're going to compare all the seeds and say, hey, uh, if they are the same length, uh, then we're just going to check like how many of the characters are the same. Like, do they have the same the same uh, uh, in in the same place. Do they have the same number or letter? Uh, and in the end, we printed that out, and I found that the most matches were at uh, at five characters. So I specifically printed those. Um, there were three of them. Uh, one of which was just a bust. There was some some error in the in the OCR, they read uh, read it wrong, and and there were a lot of mistakes. So it looked like there was a lot of a match, but only like two or three characters were the same. But I found two interesting ones. Uh, one of which is this one. Uh, so here, there's four characters at the start that are the same, and the last four are actually different. So this didn't end up being five characters, but by accident, sort of, it were the initial four ones, which were the same, which is, to me, uh, quite interesting. Um, and then the question is, I sort of gave it away, if five is the most, then there's not one with eight the same. Uh, but let's look at, at that one as well. Okay, so this is the best match that I found. Uh, there's five... Uh, matching characters is the, the Z, the G, the E on this line, and then the Q and the P, which also match. Uh, so it's five out of the eight characters uh, for this seed. Um, this, it's a really small chance of just happening by accident, but I guess that uh, if you've played as much uh, Isaac as Northern Lion, then, then the odds of this happening is are probably kind of high. Um, also, take note that I only uh, use the Afterbirth Plus videos, so if you go back uh, to the, the the original ones and the Afterbirth videos, then there's probably a lot more that, uh, or there's there's a lot more episodes in these, and maybe even better matches. Um, 
but I just wanted to do this as a fun project to see how far I could could go with this. I had been looking for some machine learning thing to do, and I figured, hey, this this is a fun thing to see how far I could get. Um, I sort of expected the um, the image detection to be the hard part, like detecting this to be the pass screen. But because it's so structured, um, and and there's a lot of like it's it's very clear that this is the pass screen. It actually didn't take that many examples to um, to make this work. Uh, the the hard part was actually do it, uh, recognizing the letters from this, um, which you probably could do better if you trained something specifically to this font, or or you actually you could rip the font out of the game probably and try to uh, do something with that. So that that might be that might be a way to find a better uh, a better match, uh, but I didn't feel like going that far. Um, uh, it's just to, supposed to be something fun after all. Um, yeah, so uh, if you have any questions about what I did, um, just let me know in the comments. Um, I'll also post uh, the code on, on uh, GitLab um, if you want to... Well, I wouldn't recommend trying this yourself, but if you're just interested to see what's what, uh, uh, then go ahead and have a peek. Um, Normally uh, on this this channel, I uh, I just play other games. Uh, if you uh, like hearing me talk through stuff, uh, you might want to check out my uh, my Seven Billion Humans playthrough. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun with that. Uh, it's also still in progress. I'm trying to optimize the final ones. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something from it.